one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out torture, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, but it's really for the general public, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T. You know, with all this talk lately about gun control, it occurred to me that I have yet to see a single politician who can explain to me how they plan to take guns away from the criminal thugs who are out there on the streets right now. Oh, sure, you'll hear plenty of talk about how they plan to take guns away from us, us law-abiding citizens. But if you take guns away from all of us legal gun owners, then the only people that will have guns will be the bad guys. In fact, I'm curious. I want to see a show of hands right now. All those for gun control, raise your hands. All right, there's one, two, three, four. Anyone else? Ah, see there, that figures. All the usual suspects. Any questions? What he's trying to sell, the utopia he's trying to sell, to the American public simply um, doesn't work. It's, it's impossible. When you say that immigrants from Mexico are criminals and rapists, isn't that spreading hate? A spokeswoman for the Davidson County Sheriff's Office said USADA was in this country illegally. Guru Aguilar faces three counts of aggravated sexual battery of a person under the age of 13. Jacobo Gurau faces one count of rape of a person under the age of 13. Police believe 19-year-old Sergio Perez, an illegal immigrant, attacked the woman in her home Sunday. 418 children were raped by illegals in the state of North Carolina in the month of August 2014 alone. Or a beautiful young up standing American woman is gunned down in broad daylight in San Francisco. Yeah, can I ask you if in the last three weeks President Obama has expressed his condolences to you or your family? Well, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, when there have been other very public deaths in this country, um, like Michael Brown and Trayvon Martin and Freddie Gray, uh, the president has expressed his condolences to the family. I would have expected him to do that here. Univision's Jorge Ramos has been playing up the role of spokesperson for the leftist agenda to blindly invade America regardless of our laws, increased crime and gang activity by illegal aliens, and America's resistance to becoming a third world nation. Donald Trump, Ramos's arch enemy of sorts, held a press conference where Ramos unleashed one of the most unprofessional and brazen attacks by a reporter in the history of presidential campaigns. Overly excited and unable to simply ask questions, Ramos turned the press conference into a debate. Okay, who is uh, next? Yeah, please. Excuse me, sit down. You weren't called. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Go ahead. No, you don't. You haven't been called. Go back to Univision. He was eventually thrown out. Soon after, Ramos ran to his liberal comrade, George Stephanopoulos, for a shoulder to cry on. And, and Jorge, you said in that piece you've never seen anything like this before, but is it what you were expecting given the disputes between Univision and Mr. Trump? No, what I would expect is that I can ask a question as a journalist, because that's our responsibility, and I would expect Mr. Trump to answer honestly about what he really wants to do. Stephanopoulos, known for his completely illegal and biased donations to the tanking Hillary Clinton campaign, was happy to oblige. And you, there is this impression out there that you've had this history of misogynist statements, that you are anti-women, you're responding to it right now, but you've got people like the chair of the New Hampshire Republican Party saying you're a chauvinist. How are you going to combat that impression? Isn't it a problem for you? 
I don't think so at all, George. In the meantime, I'm doing very well in the polls with women. This is going to be a big issue for these politicians going forward because it's about Big Brother. Uh, But on the other hand, some things do require some involvement of Big Brother. Big Brother citing Megyn Kelly was once again targeted by Trump. BBC reported he revived his feud with the Fox News Channel host Megyn Kelly, who returned to her show on Monday after a break saying she must have had a bad holiday because she's really off her game. The odds on more of these (laughs) left-wing media (laughs) outbursts happening again is a foregone conclusion. As the mainstream media viewership hits new lows and more and more pundits find themselves on the wrong side of the boiling anger of a majority of Americans in the near future, it won't be just Univision's Jorge Ramos being escorted out of the national discussion. John Bound for Infowars.com. The months of September and October 2015 could be looked back on in years to come as the most tumultuous in generations. The Chinese economic meltdown is in full swing and its impact on the rest of the world is painful. The economies of developing countries were the first to take the hit and now stock markets in 23 different countries around the world are crashing. Now it's our turn and it's going to be painful. The Dow Jones just lost 6% in a week, tumbling more than 1,000 points, the worst since 2008. Expect a short-term rally in response but the long-term picture is potentially devastating. In fact, some indications show that the Dow has to drop to as low as 5,000 before it reaches the bottom. And even as investors resort to panic selling, some sectors of the establishment financial media are still peddling this delusion that we're in a bull market. Analysts are still bullish on Apple, despite shares plummeting 20% from their all-time high. CNBC is encouraging people to pour more money into the stock market, claiming that the collapse is merely a dull year. Others are calling it a correction. When this kind of blind faith begins to take hold, you know that the bottom is about to drop out. This is exactly what we saw Back in 2006, remember this. There is no tax increase coming in the next couple of years. Monetary policy is spectacular. We have freer trade than ever before. And not only that, but there are no incomes policies things here. I I think Peter is just totally off base, and I don't think it's going to be... I mean, I I just don't know where he's getting his stuff. Well, one of us is 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 off base, but it's it's definitely not me. I mean, it's not wealth that's increased in the last few years. We haven't increased our productive capacity. All that's increased is the paper values of our stocks and real estate. But that's not real wealth, no more than the NASDAQ was wealth. When, when you see the stock market come down and the real estate bubble burst, all that phony wealth is going to evaporate. And all well, that's going to be left is all the debt that we accumulated to foreigners. Peter, uh, I'm going to take a that. bet with you on this one. I'll, I'll bet you a penny on this one that if you'll sign a letter saying that if you're wrong, you'll, you'll sign a letter that you were wrong to me in this. But you're just way off base. There is nothing out there that tells us we're going to have a nice slowdown, but it's not going to be a All right, let me ask you this. A lot of folks out there point to that. And just as they laughed at Peter Schiff back in 2006, those warning of a coming collapse have been mocked into silence, despite the fact that they're already being proven right. Oil prices, which signal true economic health, just suffered the longest streak of losses since 1986. Gold is soaring again as investors flee to safety. The crisis is truly global. The Chinese meltdown has wrecked emerging economies with reduced demand causing currencies to plunge, setting the stage for what the AP predicts could be a crippling fall. But as Peter Schiff explains, the Chinese meltdown may be to blame for the latest downturn, but they're not telling you the whole story which is that this stock market bubble was not based on a real economic recovery. It was based on the hot air of quantitative easing and artificially low interest rates. Once QE3 was tapered, stocks went sideways. And as soon as an interest rate rise was on the horizon, they tanked. Because none of those gains were real. It wasn't because the economy improved, because we became more productive, because of a genuine increase in corporate earnings. It was all about Fed engineering. It was quantitative easing and 0% interest rates. Those were the two props. 
that the Fed used to artificially prop up the market. They've already removed one, QE. That's why the market has gained no ground since the Fed ended QE. Right? All of the post-QE3 gains have been eradicated. The market has gone sideways since the Fed took away the first prop. But the markets have built, still been teetering on the second prop, which is 0% interest rates. But now everybody thinks the Fed's going to remove that prop. Well, then there's nothing beneath the market but a bunch of air, right? And the market is going to tank. We're seeing a global currency war emerge as developing countries desperately try to make their exports more attractive by devaluing their currencies. September and October are really shaping up to be pivotal months. The zombie stock market has been artificially reanimated for the past seven years with endless money printing. But the jig is up. QE has to end. Interest rates will have to rise. Vice senior analyst Larry Edelson predicts a global financial crisis of epic proportions beginning on October 7th. A ride like no generation has ever seen. The collapse is now so apparent that even big mainstream newspapers like The Telegraph are reporting, quote, central banks have lost control. Geopolitical tensions are also the most fraught they've been since the Cold War, with the Ukraine-Russia conflict set to reignite and talk of a contrived color revolution in Moscow. The fears are also feeding into wider paranoia about other events in September that could bring catastrophe. Conspiracy theorists have seized upon September 23rd as a date on which a major earth-shattering event could take place. Some are even claiming that the timing of the collapse is biblical in nature, or that it could be seized upon to finalize plans for global government. That's how freaked out some people are about the next two months. That's all speculation, but the financial collapse is happening. It's here. It's now. I appeared before the Congressional Committee to tell what I knew of activities which might lead to an attempt to set up a fascist dictatorship. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it. And he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. It's known as the Bilderberg Group. Could their objective be world domination? I'm Jim Tucker. I've chased Bilderberg for 30 years. I'll never give up the chase. Bilderberg plan for the whole world is nothing less than world government. I'm not comfortable with that at all. Who elected these guys to run the planet? They are the elitist. They feel they should run the world for their own selfish interests. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. Bilderberg is making great progress toward a world government, and only an educated, informed public can stop them in their tracks. David Rockefeller admits in his own memoirs that he wants to destroy the United States. Right. He's a traitor! It's good to be back at the Council on Foreign Relations. As uh, Pete mentioned, I've been a member for a long time and was actually a director for some period of time. I never mentioned that when I was campaigning for re-election back home in Wyoming. <laughs> Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. I need you to move off the property, please. Some shots were fired. There's Bilderbergers right there. The Trans-Texas Corridor is a vital part because we stop it here in Texas. We stop the New World Order right here in Texas. This thing started here. 
And to save this country, we kill this damn thing here. Yeah.